Hey, Maria, thanks for spending time with us again today. I've got this question that I've really been wanting to ask you because I know as an artist, you really think more about the creation process and you don't necessarily think about once you've created the work, what next? As a professional, what should be the steps that I take next, maybe on a regular basis or create a habitual practice with? Um, so do you have any advice for us on that? Yes, absolutely. So there's six things you should do after you finish a piece of art and make this a system that you do every single time. The first thing that you should do is get it scanned or properly photographed. It's really important to do this. A lot of people skip this step because of the cost involved or they don't have a scanner or they're not sure how to photograph it. But if a lot of times you can create a piece of art and not know um, that it's going to end up being one of your best. Be um, so you want to have a really good scan of it before it's sold, before it goes to someone else and you never see it again. So get it scanned. That's number one. The second thing is put it on a list of all your original art pieces. And if you don't have a list, create a list. There's a lot of uh, software programs out there for artists. I've tried them all. I always go back to the old fashioned way and I use an Excel spreadsheet. And your list should have the year it was created, the name of the piece, the medium, the size, the price, have a column in there for the name of the person who bought it for when it sells. Put every single piece of art you create on this list. 20 years later from now, you're, you're 20 years from now, you're going to thank yourself in the past for doing it because it's good to see um, how many pieces you've created and how things have changed over the years. And um, if you ever have that, museum wanting to do a show with your art in the future, you'll have a list of the names of the people who bought these pieces from you and you may be able to get them on loan from these people. So it's really important to have this data. Even if you're just starting out and you think it's not important, it really is. Do you put any kind of description inside that list or do you keep that in a different area where um, in case the media uh, wants to know something about the piece or you want to tell somebody in a small paragraph what it is? You know, I, I haven't been doing that on my spreadsheet for Drew's art, but um, definitely it's good to have a description of the piece. And that's actually on my list of six things to do. Oh, okay. So I'll get to that in a second. Um, okay, so number one is scan it. Number two is add it to your list. Number three is price it out. And I'm not going to get into detail about pricing. That's another topic, but um, have it have your price ready so when somebody wants to buy it you say yes that costs x amount of dollars the fourth thing is to copyright it yes a lot of artists aren't copywriting and you know it's really important to copyright things don't get stuck on it though um that's another topic to get into. <laughs> okay. Too much to get into right here, but um, eventually you're going to get into copywriting your work. And then number five is create a description of the piece. So, for example, um, you know, tell a little story about the piece. And it could either be a story about what inspired the piece or... It could be a story about how you created the piece. Just, just something that will intrigue someone. If someone is looking for a special piece of art and they read this description, it might just be the difference between them buying it and them not buying it. And then the last thing is, number six, add it to your website or add it to your gallery. However you're selling your work, click it in to your sales system. Awesome. That is, that is great information. And you know, I wouldn't think of that. I wouldn't think of that after I finish a piece. I, I would think I'm going to scan it would probably be the first thing I'd think about.
but um, you know, just keeping all this stuff handy. And I know you said things in the past, like make sure that you have your art available on your cell phone so that if you're just sitting somewhere and talking and you have a price list in your cell phone so that you know the prices and you're able to rattle it off because you may miss a sale if you don't have that information top of mind and, and handy, ready to go. So, um, yeah, yeah absolutely. And because most art sales are impulsive. So if you, if somebody asks, asks you about your art and you pull out your cell phone and you say, well, here's a couple pictures and they say, Oh my gosh, I love that piece. How much is that? You need to have an answer on the spot. How That's much is this? And then after you tell them the price, say, um, do you want to add this to your collection? That's what I always say. Do you want to add this to your collection? What can nice. we do to get this piece into your home? Excellent. Yeah. The uh, call to action in a sense. You're, you're, uh, right. Yeah, that's excellent. I love that. I love that. Well, thank you again, Maria. Always good stuff. Cheers.